Hello guys, welcome to the studytonight.com. So as a part of the second video, we will discuss about the concept of JDK, JRE and JPL. We will also see the some internal details of JPL. So in the today's session, the agenda is concept of JDK, then we will discuss about concept of JRE, then JVM. Then we will see some relationship among JDK, JRE and JVM. And at the end of this session, we will see the architecture of JVM. So with the help of architecture, we will know that what is the internal functioning of JVM. Okay, so let's discuss each and every point one by one. So guys, firstly we will discuss about the JDK. So JDK is the Java Development Kit. So whenever we will write any particular Java program, there are only two aspects. First is the development and second is the execution. So we will discuss JDK, JRE and JVM around only these two concepts. So what is JDK? So JDK provides an environment for the developers to develop Java program as well as execute and run our Java program with the help of JRE and JIT. Okay. And guys, it includes the JRE, an interpreter, compiler, an archiver, a document generation, and other tools needed in the Java development. So it helps us in both aspects, development as well as execution. So guys, whenever you downloaded the, you know, JDK in your system, you will see that apart from JDK, JRE will also be downloaded in your system. Okay. So, this JDK help us to develop as well as execute our Java program. Now, let's discuss about the JRE. So, guys, JRE is the Java Runtime Environment and it provides the minimum requirements for executing a Java application, a Java program. So, guys, if you want to run any Java program, in your system so the minimum requirement should be that the JDK JRE should be installed in your system and this JRE consists of Java virtual machine core classes and supporting files now let's move towards the concept of JVM so JVM stands for Java virtual machine so guys it is the important part of both JDK as well as JRE. I will prove this in the further slides with the help of formalization and you will see that at that time that JVM is you know contains I mean JVM is a part of both JDK as well as GRE. So JVM is also responsible for allocating memory space. Whenever you will write any Java program using JDK or you run any Java program using JRE, generally it firstly goes into the JVM and JVM is responsible for executing that Java program line by line. That's why it is also called interpreter. Now let's see the relationship among JDK, JRE and JVM. I made a proper formula for JDK and JRE and you will see that JDK is equal to JRE that means Java Runtime Environment and plus Development Tools. And what is the formula of JRE? JRE is equal to Java Virtual Machine and Library Classes. So with the help of second formula guys you can see that Java Virtual Machine that is a JVM is a part of JRE and if we replace the formula of JRE here then you will see JDK is equal to Java virtual machine plus library classes plus development. So from this you can also see that JVM is a part of 
GATK also. Okay, that's why I told you in the previous session that JVM is a part of both JDK as well as GR. Now, just see this pictorial representation that depicts the relationship among JDK, JRE and JVM. So, outer box represents the JDK and this JDK contains JRE and development tools. I told you the formula that JDK is equal to JRE and development tool. So, you can see from here this outer box represents the JDK. So, this JDK contains this inner box which is JRE and development tools. And if you talk about this JRE, then this JRE contains JVM and library classes. So this is a perfect representation of JDK, JRE and JVM. Now let's discuss about the architecture of JVM, the internal functioning of JVM. So in the architecture of JVM there are different components and each and every component contains some specific tasks. So let's discuss about each and every component. So first is the class loader. So it is basically used for loading dot class files. And guys, this dot class file is your pipe code file. It performs three major functions: loading, linking, and initialization. So this is the complete picture of class loader. Now let's discuss the second component that is the Java memory. So inside Java memory, there are lots of components. So first is the method area. So this method area contains all the class level information like class name, immediate parent class name, methods, variable information and constant runtime tool. So this is all about the method area. You guys should know about each and every component in a very brief manner. Okay. Now let's discuss about the heap. So heap is basically a runtime data area that includes information about objects, their related instance variables and arrays. So this is all about the heap. Now let's proceed towards the stack. So the stack is generally used to store frames, local variables and their results. Java stack also takes part for calling the functions or methods and returns the values or variables. So this is all about the stack. Now let's see what is PC resistors. So PC stands for program counter. So this is also called the program counter resistors. So guys, it contains address of the JVM instructions currently being executed. Now let's move towards the native method stacks. So in this native method stacks, all the native methods that are currently used in application will store here. Okay. Now let's move toward the execution engine. So this execution engine reads the dot class file line by line use data and information present in various memory data and execute instructions so these are the you know some basic uh, tasks of this execution engine it also contains the interpreter git compiler that is the just in time compiler and garbage collector so these are basically three parts inside this execution engine. Now let's move towards the native method interface. So guys, it's a framework which provides an interface to communicate with another application. And the last part is native method libraries. So guys, it's a collection of native libraries which we needed or we can say which are needed by the execution engine. So during the execution, if any particular library is required, then native method libraries provide those libraries to the execution engine. 
so guys this is all about the architecture of Gmail so guys that's all for this session so thank you so much see you in the next session bye bye